hard. Yeah. We have a map to play on. So we saw Villa in map number one, a map that is typically quite defender-sided, and we only saw two defend <laughs> defender victories. Ten attacking round victories. And that actually looks like we're going to go to Villa again. So we'll see how much of this matchup ends up being defender-sided versus attacker-sided, because I have a feeling uh, this match is probably going to play very different from it's the one we just saw. Very different, hopefully. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, well, who do you think is going to win? Why don't you tell us? Before the show, you predicted that it would be TSM. And you were right. Yeah, well, I mean, it, you're voting for who you want to win. It was 58 for TSM and 33 for SSG, leaving 9%. I'm surprised the draw is that low. Whenever SSG plays, I feel like the draw needs to be about 20%. Do a little bit higher. <laughs> yeah, it's just the way it works. I mean, and like you said, it might maybe that's gonna be Rogue's new thing because now Rogue has two draws. Will SSG have two draws? We're about to find out. Still walk away with the point. Both Reciprocity and Rogue got a point in that previous matchup, and Rec enters the day in first place due to the round differential. They've now got four points for their troubles, but they got both Dark Zero and Nine Do Dream Team on their heels. The good news for them is they both play each other today in our last match, so there's a possibility that they only fall to second in reciprocity. But yeah. for this TSM roster here, you knew them as Accelerate last season. And while they needed a new home, they got picked up by TSM, entering the Rainbow Six Siege scene for the very first time, picking up a roster that has quite a lot of potential. Achieved has often been touted as one of the strongest players in all of North America. And I think for a period of time probably had and wore the mantle of most underrated player. Mark was a highly touted prospect inside of Challenger League. He played on the team Organized Chaos before he jumped on over to this roster prior to them getting picked up by TSM. It'll be very interesting to see the way that both Fultz and Mark acclimate to Pro League. They were former teammates both on OC and Fultz, the way he's utilized, the way he's played on Space Station might not be something that he's the most used to. First bans are going to come out and well, we've already got a difference here. It was Lion and Capitao that were banned in match one. This time it's going to be Maverick and Jackal removed from action. Mira also eliminated here by TSM. And uh, interesting that it would be Mira, though that was an influential operator pick for Rogue, as we just witnessed in the previous match. Maestro going to be gone, so that's uh, Echo still on the board. We've seen uh, time and time again that North America prefers banning Maestro over Echo. It's, you know, depends on the region, depends on your preference, but here it is. And... Uh, Echo, you can expect to be a staple operator here on Villa. So, looks like it's going to be Aviator to start things out. This was the primary site for both teams in the previous match on the same map. Uh, and <laughs> it will be the primary for SSG. IQ bring brought, uh, sorry, being brought and IQ has to be brought because Echo is in play. She will also be useful against Legion, against Cade, or Kaid, and against Pulse. Just a generally used, uh, a useful operator in this situation, especially on Villa. Lots of soft destruction. I've written down a couple players prior to today's matches that I think are going to be interesting to watch, be it the way that they play in their roles, be it the way that they play in terms of kill death, you know, and, and what they really provide to the team. Are they spending a lot of time droning? What are their contributions, clutch factor, etc.? Fultz is one of them on SSG, and that's just going to be because he's the newest member to the Space Station squad. Everybody else on Space Station, they're known quantities. You know Bosco, you know Thinking Nade, you know Chala, you know Rampy, the current holder of the most kills in a singular map of Rainbow Six in professional play. Fultz is going to come in, and off of flex slash aggressive roles in Organized Chaos, he's been playing a bit quieter roles, which I think is very interesting. But when you've got players such as, you know, Bosco, such as Thinking Nade, such as Rampy on the team, you can take a bit of a back seat. And there is a belief among certain players that if you take somebody who is an aggressive entry frag player, you put them on support, that their talents as an entry can transfer over and make them a much more clutch support player. Because I think the general wisdom here is, or the general conventional wisdom is that it's harder to find somebody who's a, a good and consistent support who can frag well than it is to find somebody who's aggressive and can frag well as well. Yeah, definitely. Flexibility is the name of the game right now in uh, Rainbow Six Pro League. Um, not only in, on your team level, but also on an individual level. So it's something that uh, definitely a sought-after commodity when it comes to players. Now, 
Here he is, the man himself, opening up the balcony window, trying to start applying pressure to this north hallway. It's a slow clear of the Romers here for TSM on the, uh, again, the north side of the building. Romers, though, successfully cleared. Pushed back to the site, if not uh, downstairs. But there's no vertical clear here so far from TSM. Looks like Bolo's going to try and do just a little bit of that from the window downstairs. Though you can't really accomplish very much as a shallow angle just down there. You're going to have to drone yourself into bathroom if you really want to accomplish anything. Biologic using his gadget here to try and see if he can get some free electronics from below. Rampy on the pulse. Plays a huge risk in this position. If he takes out that heartbeat uh, sensor, then he's probably going to give his way a position away to Biologic. And the way that SSG likes playing this map is that they'll put the pulse down in the basement. But this time, Rampy's gotten back onto the first floor. Achieved two likes to play Buck an awful lot. We'll play Sledge in this instance. Mm -hmm. Soft destruction and frag grenades. Very similar to BC on Dark Zero as somebody in NA who's very, very good. And Bio dispatches Rampy. What a peak! The pulse had no chance there whatsoever. And now TSM have controls. They'll push up towards the main stairs and then continue on up towards this classical hall, which will look all the way down towards 90. Bio will be stunned by his own teammate, but that's really going to be all there is for the time being, as Achieved will hopefully take out somebody playing inside a vault. We need to maybe get Electric Claw on the other side, and it appears that he'll get it. Here we go, TSM starting their push from study. They're also going to open up that vault wall, which will allow them to cut off rotation from B. A peek here from Merc, but the Legion Trap's forcing him back. Molo just inside of study, looking for the rotation. It is inevitable. Impacts, though, I believe did save the wall, so that is going to be a boon for Space Station. Nice shot there from Merc onto the couch. Chala goes down, and here we go, TSM with a two-man advantage, but so little time. Crusher gets faults, and Bolo going to get shut down by Bosco. Here we go, a rally from SSG, just Merc and Achieved left. Little hole inside a vault, but it's not going to matter. Merc and Achieved clutch it out, despite there being so little access. Just a near miss from Bolo inside a vault, and you could tell that the rest of the team had no idea where he got killed from, as there was a bit of hesitancy on Merc's part as to where the smoke was playing inside of that gun vault. And from that, the rest of SSG just crumpled. Two kills from TSM. Literally came from them walking into a room, getting a kill, and then immediately running right out. Good information gathering and good reflexes from them as well to be able to capitalize on both of those opportunities, both Biologic and Merc doing what was required of them. Get the info, get the kill, get out without losing your head. Now, mind you, when Bolo pushed into Gun Vault, he got felled, and then immediately Space Station were able to lock down the remaining doorways as TSM tried to push from too many different directions. But at that point, SSG already found themselves down by two bodies. There's only so many angles that three defenders can watch against five attackers. A big part of that just comes down to trades. You trade back and forth. You trade twice, you find yourself in a 1v3 very hard to win from that position. Space Station will decide to go back to Aviator, though, and hope that maybe this time something works a little better for them. Their roam presence wasn't that prolific. Rampy was able to take up time and space, but he didn't really get anything for his troubles in the process, and the rest of Space Station just seemed like sitting ducks inside of the site for quite a while. So I gotta be honest, TSM, uh, really good execution there, but it could have been more efficient. I, they did clear out the roamer downstairs. That was good knowledge on the side of TSM, being aware of the pulse, and it was easily done. The thing that it would have made that a lot easier is if the Habana had been able to rotate over to study and use some of those Xcaros to open up the study walls to apply more pressure to the site. It was looking really hairy. Space Station were in a good position to retake that round from a serious man disadvantage for a little while. We'll see if TSM manage to make that happen this round, or if it's going to be much the same as what we just witnessed. It is starting off early to be similar, at least, as TSM begin with a north clear of the roamers horizontally. They will likely, or possibly, shift to a roam clear downstairs once again to try and catch one of those uh, vertical roamers from Space Station. However, Space Station has rotated off of the pulse, so maybe not going to be a factor. So it already looks like TSM is choosing to go from the second floor inwards instead of committing to that bottom floor. And I think a part of that is that they don't have to be as worried about a pulse as there's no pulse on the board. Yep. You know, you've got Rampy in the hands, or you've got Jaeger in the hands of Rampy, and that's pretty scary, to be completely honest, with the way that Rampy can play. Chief's position given away by the Goo Mine. Somebody from Space Station might be able to capitalize on that, but there's nobody who bothers for the follow-up. Great patience for SSG, and this is a telltale mark of the way that SSG plays. 
They don't overcommit. They don't overextend. It's a compliment, actually, that was paid to them by G2. G2 even said, we're not used to them just sitting and waiting. We're used to teams taking fights. No, you, you, when you can't fluster your enemy, it does limit your options as an, uh, an attacking team. And when, you, uh, when you're anticipating someone to just go for something, and they, they don't, they play safe instead, can be risky. Oh, this could be a beautiful flank here from Merc. He's looking for Rampy, but just barely misses the angle. Flash goes out, though, and likely will stun Rampy. He forces himself into art, and Biologic shuts him down. So once again, TSM get a kill on the Roamer downstairs, but this time there's a refrag from Thinking Nade by the main stairs. He's going to fall back as well, so he might be able to just make it back to site scot-free. It's a better start for SSG than we saw last time. Bolo with great patience, just waiting to see if there's going to be a repeat from Thinking Nate, but there's nobody who's going to bother with it at all. While the rest of TSM gets close to the doorways, just over by the top of the stairs, referred to as landing on the compass below. Mark's position will be given away as he uses one of those breaching rounds to get a freer passage into the stairs. Or in, and then Bolo up for the stairs! Oh, what a lengthy pre-fire on the Thinking Nate! And it catches his head, and Bolo will find his very first Pro League kill. The Doc, fully juiced of Fultz, will commit into a fight against Merc, former teammates, as Crusher goes for the plant, and all Merc needs to do is buy as much time as possible. TSM's Diffuser goes down quite successfully, as Crusher watches quite keenly. Fultz takes out Crusher, though, as now you have Chala pushing on up, but he can't control the recoil, as it's achieved to finish him. It's all down to Fultz. They use the remaining Stim Pistol, trying to get drawn out, playing behind that sofa, but there's so many angles that'll be looking his way, and it'll be achieved who gets him this time. There's three bodies from TSM, all trying eagerly to be able to get the final member of SSG. And TSM finds themselves up to nothing with the attackers on Villa. So far, winning the day. TSM looking much, much more potent here than they had in their previous matchup. These attacks have been well orchestrated. And the shots that TSM are landing, very impressive. The pre-fire by Bolo over in study. Just, wow. I mean, good knowledge to know that there's someone playing by the fireplace, but you know, can't always pace those pre-fires as well as what we just saw there. Apart from that, though, the TSM clear, very, very well conducted overall. I do like that they were aware there was a roamer downstairs. Their, uh, their awareness on that roamer and their assertiveness in clearing the roamer is admirable. I mean, most teams would be like, oh, there's a Jaeger downstairs, and then place somebody on red stairs to watch the flank. But nope, TSM decided to clear it out, despite not having an abundance of time. And they made it work in the end. So, it'll be a shift here. Two times on trophy, failed by SSG, and... Oh, sorry, on, on, on Avian, you're not trophy, and now they shift over to trophy, and I was about to say... <laughs> This is looking a lot like the last match. <laughs> it's, we're getting there right now. I mean, to be fair, it hasn't necessarily been Space Station choking the rounds the same way that I think we could have said Rec were, though. Maybe, may maybe, but at the same time, it has been a very attacker sided. So, I mean, it's too early to call it. Only two rounds have uh, concluded. But let's just hold off. We'll, we'll wait and see, guys. We'll wait and see. But here we go. Aviator twice into a trophy for the third. That's exactly what Space, or what, uh, what, well, what Space Station are doing here, but also what happened in the previous match for the first half. Aviator hasn't worked, so what do you do? You gotta go somewhere else. I mean, that's, we were critical of Rogue, and we said Rogue probably should have gone somewhere else after that third round. They didn't, okay, that's okay. Some teams have better ideas of their strats than we do. In this case, all teams. All teams have a much better grasp of their strats than, than we do. That's a very good way of putting it, yes. I don't think there's a single team in Pro League, Challenger League, etc., all the way down where we could be like, you know what, we're more experts than you are. <laughs> On your own strategies. We know exactly what you're trying to do. <laughs> what TSM is trying to do here is open up the master wall, and they'll use two rounds of Xkeros on two separate walls. They'll lose one, but this forces Rampy to have to commit. Probably could have saved that second one. It seemed very likely. It really just depends if he had another bandit battery, which I didn't see if he actually had one at his disposal. He might have lost three of them. No, he still had one, so he, he definitely... Just, just didn't. He just didn't. <laughs> I, I, who knows? Uh... I mean, the only thing that's been lost is that wall, though, at this point, but Bolo will once again with the pre-fire. He'll drag his cursor across and take out Fultz. That'll be the opening frag here, coming at exactly 90 seconds on in, and TSM's advance up the Astro Stairs will be halted for a moment as... You see that yellow gas from the smoke? That was great teamwork from Merc and Bolo together. Merc from downstairs using the Ash Charge to open up Study. The whole desk just popped. 
Well done to him. Good knowledge to know that would happen. Chief is going to take down Rampy. So this is looking better and better for TSM. Oh, there goes Bosco. What a vicious attack here from TSM on the Master and Astro Crossfire. They seem indomitable right now. Thinking Nade going to be lit up and finished off by Achieved. And it's just Chala trying to retake from the roam. And he's just fighting for a denial of a perfect round at this point. Just going to continue to push off backwards as somebody from TSM is likely going to try to box him out. Crusher for the second round in a row will be successful in getting that diffuser down. So the clock will start to tick on SSG more than just the timer itself. Trying to disable that diffuser will be primary goal number one. An ace clutch with a diffuser disable? Well, that's a hell of a round. But it looks like Chala is going to go with the school of laxing and just sit and camp in the bathroom downstairs and take some time pondering what comes next giving his team an opportunity to take a breather and possibly stitch together a better defense, as it seems. Like, very similarly in that Wreck Rogue matchup. Eh. TSM's going to go up 3-0 here. Seems to be a formality at this point. The timer is basically there with a quarter left. It's good patience here from TSM. Really love to see when a team just decides to lock it down instead of trying to go for the frag. And that's the round right there. It doesn't matter. Just a couple seconds ago, we eclipsed the part in which the defenders would be able to disable the diffuser. So, so Team Solomon. We'll take round number three, TSM as you know them. Right now, the defenders on Villa, they're struggling. They're struggling really hard. It doesn't matter if it's an Echo, a Maestro, or a Mira band. It's attackers all the way down for the time being. Looks like it'll be Trophy again. That does make sense. I mean, both Aviator and Trophy have been difficult for SSG. And wow, these executions from TSM. I, okay, okay. This is... So eerily close to the match that we just watched played. Because I'm looking at it this is. and I'm it going, really and I'm going, wow, look at these executions from TSM. The same exact way I said, wow, look at these executions from Rogue. And wow, look at these executions from Reciprocity. Some amazing attacks from all of these teams so far in North America. And the question is, is Space Station Gaming going to be the first team to not have amazing attacks on Villa? Is, is that what's going to happen? I don't know. We'll have to wait till the second half to find out, but geez, this is so weird. It's like a different universe where, what is this siege? Things are backwards. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they've been backwards before. Remember, remember, I'd say it's about a season and a half ago, maybe two seasons ago, when everything seemed to turn up on upside on its head with the conventional wisdom being nowhere near the truth any longer. I mean, it happens in siege. It, ultimately, this is a very, very, uh, I don't want to say, I'll say random, it, it fluctuates, is the way I'll put it. Tends to change often. Fickle, you could say. Fickle's a good word for it. Yeah. SSG, going to be going for a vertical roam on the trophy defense this time around. There's still an IQ in play, so the pulse is going to be likely shut down probably pretty easily. I mean, TSM have been, again, they've been a very assertive on, on hunting the vertical roamers, so I expect them to be so here. Bio in particular's entry has been very successful. He's been able to get two kills in rounds one and two to give his team some space, and then Bolo got it on that second round, or that third round that we just watched. I mean, when you're looking at a pulse on the board, you're hard pressed to find a better counter for him than an IQ. Yeah, I'm, well, he, she is the hard counter. Yes. Swinging wide around the corners is gonna be Rampy, and Merc is gonna have to commit to this, but he's not gonna put himself in danger. Just using the angles and, oh, he'll get him. Rampy falls, Bosco takes out Bio though, so Bio's entry will be no more. Bolo's gonna solo entry over by the pantry. He's confronted with a barricade that he's gonna have to take down at some point. One hit, two hit, or possibly even using his own gadget. He'll give his position away should somebody be nearby. And open up that wall, or that barricade, and now TSM, again, their assertiveness on clearing out the roamers is the star of the show right now. It took them a minute, just over a minute, actually, to clear out and uh, everyone downstairs, and there's no C4 threat from below anymore. That's huge. It's absolutely huge. Uh, partially, that's because Rampy decided to peek the laundry door. Not sure what he was going for there. I'm guessing he saw the heartbeat and was like, I can pre-fire this, but it worked against Rampy, and it ended up costing Space Station that, uh, that roaming presence, which is pretty huge. Now, TSM are focusing on the actual sight take, and they've already managed to cut off the rotation using those prone Habana holes. This is the common strategy these days. It also looked like Space Station had somebody in Astro that was playing that angle over by the doorway, but Achieved is trying to figure it out. It's not an Astro position that we're going to see. It's actually over towards the uh, the bathroom side, and then inside of the actual site over by stat or by trophy. Not the statuary side for the time being. There is a body in statuary just holding the tight angle, but 
The name of the game for Bolo so far has been pre-fire everything, and as you get more accustomed to Pro League, well, you're going to figure out where people are and where they're pushing you from. Still just inside a Master for the time being, as the drones will go out and wait to see if Bolo can get some information. Use some utility, with Merc possibly able to do something on the other side. Obscuring the legs of one of the defenders is that smoke, and if Merc holds his position for just a time being, he'll be able to see it. Bolo will give the mark away, and Merc might be able to capitalize off of this. He sees a goo mine go, Bolo waiting to see if there's going to be anybody to push on up, as Crusher is going to be the bait. But for the time being, this telltale patience of Space Station is so good. For the third round in a row, can TSM be able to pull off a successful plant? One and a half seconds away, and it will be yes. Once again, another diffuser going down. Crusher nailing the shots on the folks, looking for another, but he can't get it. He'll back up. Continue on as TSM just holds many, many angles. Nobody's moving at all. Great patience on their part. As the diffuser will hit one third of the way, and one member of Space Station will swing around. Merc had the opportunity for two, but he can't hit Bosco. Able to do his best, but no, Bosco will walk away from that one in great success. Now peeking around bathroom as Achieve takes out Thinking Nade. Bolo next in line. Chala takes out Achieved. There's Bolo to drop Bosco. And everybody's trading back and forth. But it's the Claymore of Bolo as Chala tries to break on out. And it's a big round from TSM's newest member. And that'll be four in a row for TSM. Throw conventional wisdom out the window here, Michael, because Villa is going in favor of the attackers all the way down. So that was actually a really nice interpretation of a trophy defense from Space Station, poorly executed. I really like what they were doing there, especially with Astro. Astro is often referred to as one of the most pivotal positions on that site, and that is true. It is what allows you to crossfire the anchors as an attacker. If you can take control of Astro, then you can take control of the round. However, it is a very rare thing to see hard destruction used on that astronomy wall into trophy. Because of that, Space Station did their own little trick there where they triple reinforced that wall and decided to try and play it close with Bosco on the smoke, using those gas canisters to deny the proximity push, or the close proximity push in through that connector. I really, really like the interpretation of how to hold trophy from Space Station. The one thing they messed up, the one thing that denied Space Station winning that round, mm -hmm is that they relied on Bosco Smoke to deny the plant inside of Master. This is the same thing in the Rogue Wreck game. The or Master smokes were entrance. used too early. The smokes weren't in the right position. If that's your only denial, then I mean, it, you have to be pixel perfect with it. And there wasn't the case for reciprocity. It certainly wasn't the case for Space Station on that round. And here's, and here's the really sad part about that. The <laughs> you don't need the smoke to deny that. You just, just peek it. It's, I mean, yeah, you risk dying to somebody holding the angle, but man, you gotta, you gotta deny the plan. I, I'm surprised that they didn't hear it. Um, it, it was, it, it, you know, it's a seven second plant time, guys. It, it takes a while. So it is a really easy peek for anybody playing inside of Trophy to deny the push in through Master and uh, to deny the plant just inside a Master entrance. And I'm just, baffled that Space Station didn't say, hey, check it, if nothing else. Oh, ho, ho. Foltz picking up his second kill of this game as down goes Bolo. That was a beautiful shot, and maybe a bit too aggressiveness, maybe a bit too much aggression from TSM, and it'll burn them. The tools from Azofia can be quite strong, but also the fragging potential is what you're going to need. Space Station, who have a couple members in the team who are going to need to find the scoreboard at some point if they want to have a better chance. That's a good, uh, I would say, that's a good start for the team so far. Yeah. TSM, though, still have plenty of tools here. So definitely not all over. Nice pre-fire there from thinking, but it's not going to land. Awareness. Mark looking for the fight. Mark's been very aggressive on these angles, but he's just baiting out the flank here from the Roamer, thinking he's going to get two for his troubles. Merc and Crusher go down a little too aggressive there. Thinking Nade's going to win those fights if you allow him to. No push in unison, just one after another. Fultz looking for more. He's as hungry as Thinking Nade is, and this looks like it's going to be the first round for Space Station, but Biologic, an easy two-piece from Master, and he starts planting. The gas canister this time will deny the plant, though. So good job to Bosco. Rampy's still down below as well with the C4 likely in hand, and there you have it. He's got an evil, or he's got the black eye cam just waiting patiently. 
Well, Bio and Achieved are in a position to walk on in, waiting to see if that smoke will clear. There's a deployable shield that might be the undoing of Bio. As he goes for what appears to be a pretty typical plant spot here. Rampy is close on the hunt, and he might be able to get Achieved if he just throws it up a little bit too early. There he goes! Bosco will clean up the last one, and Space Station will get two kills within about a millisecond of each other, I would say. And they put their very first round on the board. It's interesting, because the kill feed represented the C4's last kill, but the uh, last kill cam was actually Bosco. But yeah, there you go. Hey! Space Station Gaming have arrived, ladies and gentlemen. A defensive win. On Villa. That's the third today over two maps. Two maps of Villa. Three defensive rounds. Boy. All right, Aviator for Space Station now. They can't go to Trophy anymore uh, as they have just won it. It's going to be their last defensive stead. And they're going to rotate between these two sites. We saw the same from Rogue. At least Reciprocity went down to Kitchen once. But it seems that the favored sons of this map are Aviator and Trophy. Now, what happened last time around for Space Station here on this site was that their roam presence downstairs was not particularly strong. They held map control and they wasted a bit of time, but they never walked away with anything outside of that. And TSM were very quick to transition after clearing out that usually one lone roamer towards pushing into the site. A lot of that comes down to the utility that TSM had. Biologic was on IQ for most of it, able to hunt down the pulse that was on the board. But this time around, there's no pulse for Space Station. They've thrown uh, Rampy back on the Jaeger. And Biologic is on the Thatcher, which suggests to me that this is going to be more of a focus on taking those study walls than it is going to be about holding map control and maybe, just maybe, patrol the stairs and force Space Station to have to fight and take control of them back from you. The absolutely ridiculous amount of confidence on the side of TSM when it comes to clearing out the roamers is, I think, what makes them so efficient at it. They can often clear a roamer underneath the site within 40 seconds, and it just looks like... It just looks like they're so refined in doing so. Now... Uh, if, uh, if I'm Space Station right now, I'm thinking, let's just not downstairs. Just solid not on the roamer underneath. It hasn't accomplished anything through all of these rounds, except for the last one that Space Station just managed to win. That was the first time we saw it work out. So, yeah, it hasn't yet on Aviator, that's for darn sure. TSM, again, starting out with clearing the north side on an aviator defense. They've got three man dedicated to this push and they're gonna want 90 control. Well, he's gonna shoot his teammate just a little bit, but it's a love tap, it's not the end of the world. Still some HP left unachieved yet. I mean, if you look at some of the guns that Space Station have and the way they're gonna be playing longer angles, it still might be the difference between a single bullet or two to take out achieved, right? Right. So you always have to be very mindful of that kind of thing. I am kind of surprised with the fact that Merc is able to take up as much ground as he has been every single round. Merc has not been slowed down once on any of his entries. He's able to get right up to the site door, essentially completely uncontested. He's being droned in by his teammates and by himself as well, and it's just so efficiently done that it just looks like he's zooming into the building. So that's, yeah, that's really impressive from TSM, and he's going to get a free pick on T'Challa, who's attempting to bandit trick. A nice bait there from Crusher using the Havana Excaros, and then Merc gets the punish on T'Challa. This is a good game for Merc. You know, there's always an adjustment when you're new to Pro League and you need to get used to playing very well-coordinated teams and get used to playing against teams that have, you know, I would say probably better aim than a lot of Challenger League and, and that level of play. You got Merc, who doesn't really miss an awful lot, but TSM's going to walk right in. Biologic and Crusher basically inside of one another as the plant goes down. Crusher's been successful three times so far, but he'll be shut down. Two from Bosco, emerging from the vault, as Bolo and Merc will double up on their own, punishing Bosco for the kills that he just made and also removing Thinking Nade from play. Need to see if it's now going to be a successful plant for Merc, the Ash, who's been doing great work in terms of fragging potential, but will now be tasked with getting that diffuser down. Rampy gets achieved. Merc falls to Fultz, and it's all up to Bolo in a 1v2. Rampy very low, and Bolo appears to be a little bit lost with 30 seconds left. Fultz at full HP, three, st three stim pistols, and Bolo's been felled by a Goombon, <laughs> and as he tries to withstand, Aww. he'll find another, and that'll be two rounds in a row for Space Station as they've kept it closer, or as close as it could have been after that fourth round. The teams will switch sides, and we'll see what can Space Station muster on attack, and will TSM finally show up on defense, unlike every other team on defense so far today. 
Oh man, that's that was hilarious. But at the same time, you can't necess- you can't really fault uh, Bolo for trying to inch into a safer corner. He just happened to fall into a lesion trap. It's unfortunate, but it happens. So four two. That is, ladies and gentlemen, the very best defensive half we've seen from any team so far in Villa today, having played this map twice. So. Yeah, that's that's something. That's that's impressive. Now the question is, will Space Station be as proficient and effective as every other team in North America has been attacking on Villa? That's that's the that's now the new question. Or will TSM maybe have some amazing defensive strategies that just blow SSG away? We're about to find out. There's a line being brought here from Space Station, and this is the first time today that it is being utilized. As in the first match, it was banned and. TSM just didn't seem to want to bring Lion. We'll see what Space Station can make do with that operator. IQ also being brought because Echo is unbanned. Thatcher being brought because duh, as well as a Habana because yeah, the same. Lots of hard destruction to be done on this map. And on every site, Habana is useful because most of the walls are impact trickable. And if you put those Habana Excaros prone level, well, they won't get impact tricked. It's going to be interesting. We're going to see Lion utilized for the very first time today as he was absent from match number one due to him being one of the four banned operators. And today, in match two, he goes unbanned and he'll be in the hands of Rampy. He's got three charges on the EOD or EE1D, depending on what you want to call it, the Lion scanner that is utilized to basically freeze everybody in place. Now, when you look at Space Station's lineup, with a Nomad in the hands of Fultz and Bosco on the IQ, it, there's capitalization that could happen on this gadget. Certainly a very powerful gadget when used correctly. Again, that red light, green light sort of play style. I mean, forcing your, t your enemy to stand still is just always going to be good, even if it's just for a second. It's, it's a powerful gadget. In the right hands, in the right meta, at the right level. And that level is Pro League. Space Station <laughs> trying to clear out study, and they've done that. Establish control. Now they're going to start holding on to those flanks. Fultz likely to try and rotate over here to uh, put those air jabs on the main stairs as well as that study door, but could be later in the round. Seems like he's trying to accomplish other things right now. That's some really good efficiency there from Bosco. The IQ is so potent on this map. 90 seconds in and not a single EOD has been utilized. So Space Station strategy, at least what you'd assume, is check everything and then go for broke. Utilize the Lion to get an early pick, possibly use it a second time in order to get the diffuser down, and then go from there, possibly another in the post plant. You're not using it to hunt roamers right now. The only member of TSM that appears to be that far off site is Merc, who's playing on the stairs, just patiently waiting for somebody to possibly enter through the main floor. But there's nobody from Space Station who's doing so. As you mentioned, Space Station is looking quite well at that study wall to maybe be able to open it up. And with Achieved on the cardiac sensor for the time being, he's completely nestled in there. He doesn't have to worry about getting pushed because his cross is covered by Bolo, and the wall, for the time being, doesn't have any x -Keros on it. Love the shield placement there, allowing Bolo to play in the bar quite quite safe. He's actually going to rotate to Vault, leaving bar undefended. I'm curious as to why the shield was brought then, if that was the plan. Moves over to Vault. So this is good control for Space Station denying bar, whether they know it or not. Great use of the x -Keros on both walls. Now that would be why Bolo rotated, but only 25 seconds in a five versus five. This is going to be messy. TSM have good information thanks to the pulse, but here come the air jabs from Space Station. Some aggressive ones probably going to be used from Fultz. Bolo trying to play aggressively as well to hold on to the B-bomb site, and he will be successful in eliminating Bosco. The plant's going down inside of Bar by Chala, and there's good coverage from SSG. That's three in a row for them. TSM trying to retake, but the plant is down now. Bolo on low HP will get another one for himself. That's two for him in the round. He's looking for the third. Knows there's got to be one by Pool Table, but he does not check it, and there goes Bolo. Just achieved now in the 1v2. Location given away of Thinking Aid. He's on low HP. This is an easy kill for achieved if he sees but a foot of his opponent, but he has to get the one versus one, and now he's on low HP as well after he tries to cross by Fultz. The pool table saving, thinking Nate, and Fultz gets the final kill. Space Station take the round. A beautiful attack onto the Aviator. Now by my count, if you add the Wreck and Rogue matchup, we are looking at eight diffusers being planted so far over a combined 19 rounds. Wow. Almost a 50% success ratio for teams to be able to get that diffuser down. That's a very impressive statistic, especially when most maps sail by with maybe two, three, 
at most, diffusers going down. Even when you factor in overtime on land matchups, there's still very few diffusers that go down. This time around, it, every single team has been somewhat proficient. Rogue got three down, TSM got three down, Rec got one down, Space Station's now gotten one down on their very first push. And once again, the attackers continue to win on Villa. Can I just say... You may. Kudos to TSM, the first team today to rotate off of their primary site pick after losing it one time. Just... Good job. Are you clapping? I was clapping, yes. No, they did it, though. I mean, they, they decided to not try to defend Aviator twice in a row. Everybody else has been doing that. SSG did it earlier. Uh, Rogue did it earlier. Reciprocity did it earlier. <laughs> they all tried Aviator twice. Reci Sorry, R Rogue actually tried R Aviator three times in a row uh, uh, at the beginning of their defensive half. So, I mean, yeah, good job to TSM. They're, you know, they're moving. They're trying to adapt. I think one thing worth saying is that this is a TSM that has shown up in far better fighting form than the one that we saw two days ago. Now, you can't just simply chalk it up to the addition of Bolo, who does have, a, for the time being, a pretty good KD. But it, you've got to imagine that the strats that they had with Pojo involved, maybe he just wasn't in a position where he was comfortable as a player. Now you've got him as the steady hand back on the tiller from a coaching perspective. And additionally, Tomas from 92 Dream Team in the interview said, you know, they were running a lot of similar strats to when I was on that team. Maybe Villa brings a different bag for TSM. Yeah. Plus, there is that the, that uh, that Thomas counter that is worth true. noting because he he knew he knows that team he knows this team very very well. And that's a hard counter for sure. Lots of information for his squad then. Uh, on uh, but but at the same time, at the same time, and this is really important. Pojo, he is a great player. You cannot deny that. But at the same time, he is probably not who TSM has been scrimming with. That's that's the big thing. Because when you scrim with a player and then suddenly there's that player just disappears and then you put someone else, anyone else, could be the most amazing player in the entire world, you put someone else in his stead, then it will still upset how you play. So it, it probably just comes down to that. Additionally, I don't think that the team's play matches Pojo's style. This is a very aggressive, all-or-nothing style of team. TSM is probably carving out a niche for themselves as being unpredictable. Mind you, not the same way that another aggressive NA team, I would say, is 92 Dream Team plays on. Pojo is used to, I think, a lot more unpredictable but well-structured teams. If you look at his time on Flipside through SK through Dark Zero, he just doesn't necessarily fit that mold. He seems somebody who's well-suited for coaching. So I have no doubt that he'll be able to provide guidance. And of course, both coaches in this matchup are former players. Lycan played in Pro League, Pojo played in Pro League, and they both bring a wealth of experience that both of these teams We'll be able to benefit off of. But there's been very little that have happened. We are now in the final minute of action. Nobody's died. Nobody's even had a bullet graze their skin. As we hear an EOD go off, it'll be the very first one. And Crusher will take out Bosco. Down goes Crusher as it's immediately traded out from Thinking Nade. So Space Station are there to dot their I's and cross their T's. So Claymore gets down. That'll possibly be alerted to achieved if he decides to run in that position. We've also got Fultz below dropping the air jab. So everybody seems to be quite spread out in Space Station is waiting for the moment to strike. That'll likely come with the second DOT that'll be dropped from Rampy. And here it comes. A very short warning and all of Space Station appears to edge ever so closer to the web or to the site. Down goes Thinking Nade. Caught in the web as Bolo drops. Merc drops. Bio drops. Thinking Nade with two now. And it's all up to achieved. He spotted the Claymore, he's worked his way up. He's gonna continue up those stairs, but he'll have to stop for a moment as there are two ACOGs looking in that direction. Achieved is uh, basically a dead man walking at this point, trying to tussle with multiple members of SSG on those Astro stairs. He doesn't have an ACOG at his disposal. Another successful diffuser will go down, two in a row for Space Station as Achieved will have to work against the time. He's also completely blind. Lights up a body, drops the Lion a Rampy, waiting to see if somebody else from Space Station will aggress, but no, they all just hold their position. Once again, this telltale sign from Space Station playing around it. Oh, it looked like Achieve might have been able to get that, but he doesn't land his shots. His thinking made just wiggles out of the way. And SSG take four in a row. It's an answer back to TSM's four in a row. So much the same as what we saw last match. Though, nice try there from TSM. 
Good execution from SSG. Pretty standard stuff and well put together. It's going to be Kitchen from TSM, and they will not stop moving when it comes to these sites. They don't want to get stale. Gotta appreciate that. Really do. But, uh, hmm. Not much is working for TSM. The defenses are looking pretty strangled. Uh, there's not a lot to say in the positive column. Um, yeah, good executions from a space station, but at the same time, TSM are giving away a lot of picks. Their holds are pretty lackluster. It's it's pretty much, it looks, again, it's the same thing we've been seeing all day on Villa defense in this North American play day, which is just an oddity, but at the same, it's what ha it's what's happening now. The bigger question that's going to be asked is what happened to Villa? What has made it look so far like a more attacker-sided map? Because there's been a couple players, especially in Europe, who have come on record saying, you know, it's not as defender-sided as it used to be. Is it just simply that teams are getting more accustomed to the map? That's always how it happens. I mean, sure, but you've got to think that there are, will be some maps that are more defender-sided, right? Clubhouse, for the time being, was the most defender-sided, but it's evened out quite a bit. Technically speaking, I believe, not for this season necessarily, but if you, if you add all of the last few seasons together, I believe every map is technically defender-sided. Um, so, I mean, it really depends on how you're looking at it, right? That's a good point. There's an ebb and flow to every map, right? We've talked about this on broadcast before where... That it changes. You start to figure things out and old strategies become new strategies, new strategies become old strategies. And Well, for the time being, it could just simply be down to the bans, but I don't necessarily know if a Maestro ban is the reason for this change here, especially now no. Mira ban is... Mira was played so infrequently in the previous matchup, even though she wasn't banned. I, I think it's just that teams are slowly figuring it out as well. And yeah, it's not the bans. Because we have we have di vastly different bans in the last match, and it was the same thing last match. Biologic from below on the pulse takes down Thinking Nade, but Bosco, it will take out Merc, so it's a one for one. I think that's way worse of a loss, though, for Space Station. You take out the Thatcher right away, your EMPs are gone. That means that you're not going to have the cardiac sensor get disabled for pulse. The cloaking device, her vigil, is not going to get disabled, and no goo mines will be taken out in the process. It also means that you can't EMP any ADSs, so you'll have to either expend their charges by throwing something in, or firing a projectile in, or just simply shooting them. That means that even though Merc isn't alive, his gadget will continue to be very useful for the rest of his team. And like I said, I'm very happy if I'm TSM with that encounter. And certainly. Essentially a free kill there. A really nice angle from below onto the window, catching Thinking Nade in the middle of a vault. Now, this IQ could actually pick up a free kill onto the Pulse if he plays his cards right. I think he's, he's he was detecting for just a second there, but no longer. Again, that IQ spotting gadgets and destroying them. One ADS just now. Vault's looking through the long angle into Memorial. It's a very powerful angle to hold. And that's what makes Memorial such a difficult position for the defense to play. It looks like Chala with no X-Karos is going to have to stall an awful lot of time just to try to get that Castle Barricade down. But his bigger issue is going to be the fact that he's exposed now because the X-Karos opened up. Rampy knows he's very close to being able to find Bio here, but he cannot find the kill that is needed as Bio will just simply sit and wait. But beautiful shot from Rampy, utilizing an EOD for a free kill, and Bola throws it in place as well, showing the strength of Lion as he roars and silences the members of TSM. Final 30 seconds of round number nine, we have a tie game, and it's only up to Crusher and Achieved to try to hold against the four members of Space Station. And to see if there's going to be advance down the stairs is achieved. He might have to get closer into the site because for the time being, it's just Crusher with a beautiful shot, drops Chala, and the Diffuser will fall down too. But SSG have control of the site, continue to push on up. Waiting to see if you're going to get a pushback from Crusher for the time being. Rampy jostling around the bomb. Waiting to see. No. The castle peeks on out. Misses. Rampy lays the shots on in and Achieved isn't quick enough to get back. Another diffuser goes down. That's three in a row for Space Station. And it's going to be our sixth in this matchup. Achieved will try to hold it all together, but he's in bad shape. And Rampy will finish him off. A mercy killing for Space Station to take their fifth in a row. And man, oh man. There's just a landslide time and time again as every single one of these teams on Villa try to bury each other, and for the time being, it's Space Station edging out ahead. And Space Station looking a little bit more refined on their attacks and their defenses so far. It's uh, back to trophy for TSM. Or actually, no, no. Aviator, pardon me. They'll change it. But that's just a full circle, and in the worst possible way 
in that TSM have not managed to win a single defense just yet. However, at this point in the first half, neither had SSG. So, this is definitely not the end of the world if you're TSM or one of their fans. Certainly recover, uh, recover, recover potential, I guess is the way I'll put it. Um, but it's, it's not good for anyone on defense right now. This is the way it looks. Now, TSM setting themselves up here. Brought a decent operator selection. It's pretty common stuff. It's the same thing that we've been seeing pretty much throughout the day. Space Station continuing to bring that lion, and the lion was so potent in the last round. Just incredible. The thing that really stood out to me on the last round was the vertical pressure from Space Station and the lack of denial upstairs from TSM. You can't really defend Kitchen without at least trying to delay upstairs for a little bit. They did push Merc upstairs, and he was dispatched pretty quickly, but uh, at the same more than a one-man roam. Come on. Like, uh, I mean, it was just too easy for Space Station. Those EE-1Ds made it even easier. I think it's safe to say that a singular EOD got two kills. That's it. Yeah. Imagine utilizing your gadget once and getting two kills out of it. Well, that's good usage. And it was good follow-up from SSG to take advantage of the fact that Lion is in a very strong position when it comes to that kind of coordination. Yeah. So even though he might be a little bit changed, and I think it is... Safe to say he's not as good. He's not as good. Uh, I still think that when you look at the way that he was utilized there, it was it was pitch perfect. Dude, as long as he makes you stand still, that's what it's going to be. I mean, uh, I mean there is three. a counter. There is a counter in mute that could possibly be brought out, and none of the teams that we've seen so far have decided to bring a mute at all. Obviously, it doesn't fit into TSM's lineup, and when you look at what TSM has going for it, their denial is likely coming from either a bandit or a lesion. Be that information denial, be that the ability to walk into the site, etc. It could be a change that you see if Space Station continues to mercilessly beat down TSM with these Lion Charges. We'll see. You can replace the smoke with the Mute, considering the Echo is still in play. But it's just, you know, it's less denial. And on a site like Aviator, you certainly don't want to give up your smoke. No, that is very correct. Now, Volt's going to set up those air jabs for the staircase. Just doing his best here. Try and deny that flank. IQ having a field day with her gadget. Getting a lot of electronics there. Rampy has control of 90, which is very powerful. And Chala's going to open up that vault. At least he tried to open up the vault. There it goes. So vault open. Done deal. Probably just a prone hole, but it's going to deny play in vault to the defenders, which is the most powerful thing. Boss was going to spring into action as that EOD drops, and nobody gets found, though, as the smoke will choke off Chala from being able to plant. Looking for their fourth successive diffuser going down in a row at Space Station. But oh. what a beautiful C4 from Achieved, taking out Bosco and Chala, and here's your counterpunch from TSM. Rampy will eliminate Biologic, but it's the very first kill for his team, and he's going to be under fire now as Achieved looks for another as third on the board, as Fultz is essentially on glorified flank duty. He'll fell Merc, but his position at the top of the stairs will be given away, and he knows he can't walk right in through that doorway. He'll be able to trudge on in, but he'll take some damage in the process and will likely alert the remaining members of the defense. There's still a pulse on the board as well from Achieved, so the information for TSM will still be there. Fultz just waits very patiently. Might take the bait of the UMP as he walks in. Over top of the boards, but the smoke is in a position and Fultz will win that fight. Tries to go for the other, but no. It's a cross being held by Bolo and TSM will stop the bleeding, tying us up at five apiece. The first round on attack that SSG has not been successful in getting that diffuser down. And if you saw that clock in the bottom right, it was by a hair achieved, essentially saving the round all by himself. So the difference between TSM and SSG when it comes to attack is as follows. TSM were very efficient and very assertive when it came to clearing out the bottom floor roamers to deny the C4 from below and allow for freedom of movement when attacking under the site. SSG ignored it. They had an IQ in play as well. They probably would have been able to see the cardiac sensor, but they just didn't try to deal with the problem that was present downstairs in that Pulse C4. So good job to TSM getting away with it, but that really does fall on the shoulders of Space Station Gaming. We can say that with authority, given how efficiently and how cleanly TSM dealt with Space Station's own roamers downstairs in the first half. So... Good job to Achieved. Well played. Now, TSM bringing a, uh, a clash of all things. 
So this is an interesting change. It is worth noting that TSM has started their uh, defensive wins earlier into their defensive half than Space Station had. Space Station started winning around round five. That's, you know, right at the end. TSM right in the middle. A team is going to go on a match point no matter what happens. Right now it appears that it will likely be SSG just based on, you know, the past of the attackers I was winning. Who knows, maybe Clash is enough to change things up. I mean, I like that TSM is bringing it out, right? You know, it's it's a different operator coming out. We haven't seen an awful lot of Clash play so far this season. There are a couple teams that like her quite a bit. You know, Penta is a team that brings her out, and Stream is a team that brings her out. But North America doesn't have a ton of Clash players. Dark Zero brings her, for example, and I believe we've seen Rogue play her a couple times, but... It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's... it's been interesting. Space Station's been a team that's brought Clash 2 when Redeemer used to be on that roster way back in the day. True. He, he was a uh, pretty... I mean, they, they definitely did manage to make that work for them. The thing is, is that Clash obviously is not in the same place with how Capitao has been buffed. He is a significant counter to her, and given her speed and the fact that that fire spreads now, it's, it does an awful lot of damage. Capitao, Sophia, Nomad. There's a lot of ways to deal with Clash. Oh, Chala coming very close to being able to get one person, but no, he's just shooting away at the wall. You can't shoot through that brick at all. So there's no prep. Uh, no, there's no prep work being done on the top of this triple wall. Actually, thinking Nade could just EMP the wall, then the thermite from Chala, and bam, you're into study, or rather, a uh, statuary. Pardon me, because yeah, there's no setup for impacts. I'm sure there are impacts. There just isn't a prep hole. Rampy very aggressive on the Astro Stairs. This is dangerous, actually. Um, but he's trying to work in tandem with his teammates pushing from the bathroom. Lifeline's coming out, but it's actually going to stun Rampy on accident. It's unfortunate for SSG. There's a Clash playing an Astro, and that's the main hurdle here for Space Station. I don't know how aware they are of that, because Bosco could have put himself in a position to tussle with the Clash. He has those lifelines available, and he could possibly move the Clash's shield long enough to allow Rampy to sprint on up. Hit that Clash once or twice so that she takes quite a bit of damage. Pop an EOD and you've basically got yourself a free kill at this point. Obviously you've got Crusher from long range trying to smoke off any advance that would come out from TS or from Space Station. But great patience from SSG will reward them with their very first kill. With 45 seconds left, it comes at a time where they're going to need a couple more. Taking Bolo out of the fray. That's going to be any breach now that they might have needed on the defensive side as it's a bandit down. Could have also been a C4 that was utilized. Still two EODs available at the disposal of Rampy should they need it. A space station will now maneuver on outside of the site. Head back for the hills, disabling the gadgetry of the Clash as that's a toxic babe shot out by thinking Nate. He'll continue to march forward. Bosco takes out Achieved and the side of the Clash exposed for just a second. Swinging wide, the shotgun barrel in Crusher's hands will do nothing as Chala stops him in his tracks. The Clash is only ally will be Merc, who takes out Bosco. Tries for another, but Rampy drops Bio, and while it's a trade, it doesn't really matter. Space Station will just simply out-hustle TSM on that round. No Diffuser going down, but Space Station will take their fourth of five attacking rounds, and TSM will be pushed to the brink. It's match point in favor of SSG. Good execution there from SSG. I like the, uh, the change into the clash there for TSM, but it man, was it not enough. The operator itself, very potent. Again, able to hold down study for a decent amount of time. I like the way that they were working in tandem with the smoke, holding on to Astro until the last minute. But ultimately, still, SSG got control of Astro. Following that, they opened up the master wall, uh, the ma sorry, master wall and then they had... a. Uh, Actually, they didn't even need to because they just pushed in through Master Door and then had enough control to go for a plant. It's interesting because they... Space Station didn't clear out any of the roamers horizontally. There were still some pre present roamers on that south side of the building, in the south hall, actually the main hall. And that could have been a huge boon for TSM, denying that entire flank. And then from that position, they could have denied Statuary, but they lost the fights straight up. That's it. TSM just lost the fights to Space Station. And on that entry, Space Station established enough control to get the start getting the plant down. They didn't actually in the end, but they would have had they needed to. So, TSM fight for a draw now. Uh, there's no way for this to be a win, and uh, that'll be a point for them if they manage to get it, but just that. And, yeah. I mean, Michael, 
what team is in this match right now? And we're looking at a possible draw. Space Station. They drew match number one against Rogue. They're about to draw, well, that's speaking too soon. They could draw TSM right now. And uh, yeah, they and Rogue both, actually. <laughs> so we got two teams in North America really gunning for draws. I mean, obviously they don't want them. Nobody wants a draw. It's effectively a loss, but <sighs> yep, it's happening. Talking about players, of course. So with TSM now fighting for their lives, essentially, you have an opportunity to take advantage of the fact that, well, you got to go for broke, right? Achieve tried to tussle with Bosco, but he gets drowned out, and he just has to get out of there as quickly as he can because that would have been a very open. That would have been an early opening kill for Space Station, and allowed them to just bust this round wide open. It's now Fultz waiting to see if there's going to be a re-engagement from somebody on TSM. It was the UMP in the hands of Achieved, and a very quick shot to the back of Merc will deal about 50 HP. But that'll be all she wrote, trying to capitalize off of the rotate and utilize this EOD to try and find a roamer. But there's nothing from Space Station for the time being. They gain an awful lot of ground in that two to three seconds of total silence and quiet from the defenders, but that's about it that they'll get out of it. This is really big. It took Space Station 30 more seconds to clear out the roamers downstairs as compared to TSM. They only got half HP on Merc, no kill, and it cost them a whole heck of a lot of utility. So... Yes, job done. No C4 from below, at least for, you know, at least probably no C4 from below. But there's still roamers in play, the pulse is still there, and there's only a minute left to execute. Does Space Station know that the pulse is in the basement? That's going to be a big question that needs to be answered over the next one minute and five seconds that remain in this round. Because if they don't, and this, things can go quite badly for them and go south in a hurry. Look at the wall quite easily. Is Leave the exothermic charge blow up the floor and take some of the wall out with it. Rampy will be posted up on astronomy stairs as that's been his home so far in attack, doing the same thing over and over and over again. Second wall will be blown up with the exothermic charge and this will be freer access into the bathroom from the closet. I think he made jumps on in. So for the time being, the only person who's lost any HP is Merc and he did that very early in this round. Need to see what'll happen as Space Station will have to hasten their advance. 30 seconds to go and they'll knock on the door now. They know they have a target inside of Astronomy, but it's Bio. He gets spotted. The Lion will push on in. Merc gets one. Rampy will twist. Looks for a second, but won't grab it. Bola will shut him down. And TSM will continue to go. We're barreling towards a draw here and Space Station will find themselves <laughs> in another opportunity. Dropping points on the board. That'll be it. It's a perfect trade between both Chala and Bolo. And of course, leave it to Bolo to be the person to get the very final kill after his debut. Two matches, Villa, attacker-sided, draws, and Space Station as well.